Hello everyone. Today we're going to have a look at a Philips function generator which I recently purchased off eBay. Unfortunately it has a fault on it which I'll show you in a moment. And uh, what I thought I'd do is just take you through the process of me going through and trying to repair this unit. The model in question is the Philips PM5127 and it uh, can produce a frequency from 0 0.01 of a hertz all the way through to 1 megahertz. So let's first of all have a look at what the problem is. Right here we have the, uh, the function generator now connected to the oscilloscope here and I'm monitoring the output uh, and uh, as you see I can I can change the, the frequency of the output signal as you see on the oscilloscope but when you look at the symmetry of the sine wave you'll see it's clipping on the bottom part of the sine wave. Now this to me suggests that there is an issue with the output amplifier of this function generator so I think the first thing I'll do is when I unbox the unit we'll just try and locate the output amplifier stages and see if we can see if there's anything obvious there. So let's take the case off the unit and have a look inside. I've now removed the top cover and the bottom cover of the function generator so uh, it's all on one uh, printed circuit board here um, and what's quite nice about it is that uh, Philips have gone to all the trouble of identifying each section of the board as to what part of the circuitry it is and you'll see that they're designated by these white lines that are marked out on the printed circuit board and uh, interestingly across the bottom here the whole of this section is labelled as the power amplifier so that's probably the, the area that I want to focus on in a moment this section here is the sine wave shaper section of the generator and then this section here is actually the oscillator section of the function generator and then this section here is the power supply. So it's, it's well laid out and um, it's very very well indicated on the printed circuit board. All the components are uh, clearly accessible, there's no issue there. There's an awful lot of presets here for calibrating the unit. I'm not going to touch them at the moment, I'm just going to focus on the fault. So I'm going to focus around this area here to see why uh, the output signal is uh, clipping on the negative part of the sine wave and it's probably one of the channels is faulty so looking at this you can see that you've got two power transistors here it's like a sort of a push-pull type uh, circuit and you've got that channel there and you've got that channel there so obviously one is dealing with the positive half of the sine wave and one dealing with the negative half of the sine wave so I'll just do a visual check first in this area here to make sure there's nothing obviously wrong, either any resistors that have got damaged or burnt or if there's any of these transistors that uh, we have an issue with. So let's just have a, a quick visual inspection of the, of the board. I'll just zoom into this area a bit closer. Just uh, looking down this area of the board here, obviously there's been some work done at some points the resistor being a new resistor being fitted across there. Um, there doesn't look to be anything obvious that is damaged or burnt, but um, these transistors are actually soldered onto the, the board with little standoffs. But that's interesting. When I touch these two transistors here, this one feels fine. For some reason these two transistors appear to be wobbling, they appear to be loose, particularly this one here. So we'll have a closer look at that on the print side in a moment. Uh, the others all seem to be fine and there's no obvious damage elsewhere on the, the board. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate in this area of the board here where there's been some previous work done there and these two transistors appear to be a little loose on the at least on the top side of the board so let's have a look at the reverse side of this focusing this at this area here 
and we'll have a look at the printed circuit. So we're now looking at the print side of the board and I'm concentrating in this area here where we have those two transistors that appear to be loose on top. Um, so it's this one here and this one here. You can just th see the three pins of the transistor there. It does look a little bit brown so it looks as though there's been some previous work done on that. So uh, let's zoom in a little bit closer and have a look at these. Right, I've just uh, zoomed into the air of the board here where we appear to have the, the issue and I'm going to focus on those two transistors I said there's one there you can see the three pins coming through and the other one here the ones on the other channel are higher at one there and one there but let me focus first of all on the the bottom two so we're going to focus on that one and we're going to focus on that one there. So if I just put my finger on the transistor on the top of the board it felt a little bit loose so I'll just wiggle it around uh, clearly you can see there it appears to be loose. In fact that bottom pin there appears to be broken which could be the reason we have the problem and the other transistor here it's not quite as bad but it's still uh, wobbling around so I think what I will do I will just go in there both to that one and that one this one particular here and uh, clean up that area there and then just make sure it's correctly soldered to the printed circuit board. I'll probably have to repair this one because it looks like it's broken there. So let me do that and then we'll come back and uh, we'll give the unit a test. There you can see I've now repaired the, uh, the printed circuit on the board. You can just see there where I've had to put a wire, wire link there to repair that broken track and I've just cleaned those up and resoldered those and I've done the same here, those were all loose as well. So they're all now resoldered and cleaned up. So uh, let's just uh, turn it around and uh, let's give it a test again. Right, while we have the uh, top off, uh, let's just have a look at what's on this board. Uh, there clearly is the power supply section and uh, you can see there that we have the, the green items there, there are the bridge rectifiers and there's the smoothing. This particular IC there is a, a, a dual uh, voltage tracking regulator chip. It's the SG4501J and it's driving these two power transistors here on heat sinks. You have a, a BD137 and a BD138, a sort of complementary pair and here you have the presets to set the output voltage of the power supply and that's setting the regulated plus and minus 15 volts but they also tap off a plus and minus 24 volts unregulated which is used for the power amplifier circuitry down here this part of the board as I mentioned before that's the the power amplifier output stage of the board uh, there you have two power transistors in a complementary pair on the output. Again you have a, a BD137 and a BD138, sort of as a, um, an NPN and a PMP. And then you have some sort of medium power transistors here. And these are um, 2N2219 and 2N2905. So again it's uh, NPM and PNP. Uh, this one here is a, a 2N2905, so that's a PMP. This one here is a 2N2219, which is the NPN. Here we have another 2N2905 PMP, and another 2N2219 NPN. So this is just a, a straightforward uh, power amplifier stage on the, on the output. This part of the board here is the oscillator parts and they're using 
for single operational amplifiers here uh, in a TO39 package. These are all TBA221. And there's a couple of medium power tra transistors there. They're NPN, they're both BD137. And here you have a slightly unusual, this is a, uh, a dual uh, NPN transistor package. There's two NPNs in one package. And that's the it's a BCY89, and that's in a TO71 package. There's another little power transistor there, it's a, a BD137 again. Uh, you have quite a number of uh, just general purpose transistors here. These are all either a BC548 or a BC547, and uh, you've got some other metal canned. Uh, uh, transistors around which are BSX20s or similar. This section in the middle of the board here is the uh, sine wave shaping circuitry and they're achieving that by a lot of uh, diode resistor combinations here so it's the this arrangement that's providing all the shaping of the waveform together with some general purpose uh, transistors here and there's a few presets there to uh, carry out the adjustment. Well there you have it, the, uh, all the components are on one printed circuit board here and uh, the only other things on the reverse side is really the mains transformer. Just a quick look. So there you can see the mains transformer and you do have a, an additional little board here, this one here and that is the uh, attenuator switching board, the output attenuator switching board is there and the on off switch down here. When I looked at the uh, board at the top, I thought the 24 volt supply was, was not regulated, but when I have a closer look, there's actually a couple of uh, power transistors here, which are actually bolted onto the side of the casing there as a heatsink, and uh, they're actually used to regulate the plus and minus 24 volts, so really the, the 24 volt supply and the 15 volt supply are both regulated. Right, I have the, the unit back together again now, I have the oscilloscope on top at the moment. So what I'm going to do is uh, switch the unit on and see if it's now working correctly. There you are. You've certainly now cured the, uh, the clipping on the negative cycles of the sine wave as I alter the, the frequency. Increase the frequency. That seems to be working fine. Right, check the different waveforms, triangle waveform and square waveform. The amplitude, a little bit noisy that, so I may have to give that a clean. But other than uh, giving it a good clean and uh, maybe just checking the calibration, it seems to be fine. Just looking at the uh, the calibration there, I can see the the frequency which is logged by the uh, oscilloscope in its frequency counter there, and that's showing 41.8567 kilohertz. And the the dial at the moment is just over 444, then times the 1040. So it's it's more or less fairly close. Let me just uh, lower down to if I'm on the two there times ten, so that should be twenty kilohertz. If I just trim that there, and it's uh, showing on the oscilloscope there twenty point eight seven three nine kilohertz. So that doesn't seem too bad. Just check the higher frequency. I'll set that to two. That should be times a hundred. And that's a bit out. That's showing me 206.18 kilo, uh, kilohertz. And here we, we're just on the 2 there. So I may just have to uh, just check the calibration more thoroughly uh, and just give it a little trim. But other than that, the unit seems to be fine. And uh, I'm quite pleased with that. Well, I hope you found that repair of this uh, Philips function generator of interest. Thanks for watching, see you again next time.
Bye for now.